Meet the boys who have everything. Glamorous jobs, celebrity best friends and pots of cash to spend on themselves. Sean, the PR guru. Phil, TV's heartthrob handyman. Stan, a former boy band star. Ben, the marketing whiz kid. And Gary, makeup artist to the stars. They're all gay, and two of them are going to get married. Sean Borg's the leader of our pink pack. He's a PR guru with his own company based in London's West End. He uses his drive and contacts to make sure his celebrity clients are never out of the tabloids and glossy magazines. Sean is never off the phone. He should, he should get a headset, he'd hate it, but it would just save him holding his hand there. But he's always on the phone. His phone's always ringing, he's been texted, been sent pictures, been sent... It's forever on the phone. Today, he's taking time out for what his own PR would have us believe is a rare session of Botox treatment at a Harley Street clinic. This is all like Botox to go, isn't it? Yes. I'm in and out of here in five minutes. A quick one. Yeah. We're not in you know, the traditional relationships of women, so therefore we're not about to have children, and so therefore every penny we earn is our own. Penny, I want no expression. I want to stay... <laughs> I'm really frozen. Exactly. All right, good. Freeze me. Sean is the leader of the gang, really, yeah. He's very scheduled. His day, every day of his life is scheduled. You know, he gets up in the morning, he knows when his meetings are, he knows when his lunches are. That's a huge needle. And brave, really, you know that. He fits his friends in and around that, and he's one of those people that is constantly networking, constantly doing what he does. That's why he is where he is at the moment. That's why he has his PR company. PR guru, whenever you see people staggering out at clubs and everything, probably Sean that set that up. See how quick that was? You did great. Brilliant man. Oh, am I bleeding? No, you're not. Thank you very much. Nice I'll be in touch soon. Yeah. Hopefully I won't have to come back for a while. But right. Anyway, thanks. Take care, bye-bye. With bye. us, we, it's the first sort of gay group I've ever been close and friends and open with. Um, and that's really nice, you know, and therefore we're very open. We have a great time. We do camp it up and we are quite queenly, but I wouldn't say we're necessarily, we don't set out to be cliche gay or anything like that. Oh, you're so <laughs> Until six years ago, TV handyman Phil Turner was a builder. None of his macho mates on his building site knew he was gay, but they do now. He came out on the front cover of a magazine, with a little help from his good pal Jordan. With more TV appearances coming up, he's topping up his spray on tan. going to be really brown this time? Uh, not too brown. Okay. It's winter, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Well, we'll, 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 just, we'll have a bit of distance yeah. then, so we don't get too brown. He's probably the butch guy out of the five, I suppose. He's a little bit more, he's the builder, hunk sort, who you would never, if he was walking down the street, you would never think that he was gay. Me nipples are always around. <laughs> <laughs> Sean's a gorgeous, I got into modelling when I was about 22. Um, did a couple of different things, but then did a lot of work with page three girls, because I had a good body and I worked out a lot. I literally was like, paid seven fellas, and I did all this stuff, and the guys on a building site, you know, something might come out in the paper the day before, I'm going to burp. <laughs> Excuse me, I had to go. <laughs> Sorry about that, you've got stereo as well. <laughs> now, and then I'd be on a building site the next day, and suddenly they've plastered all these pictures out of me and this pay three girl. Oh, I bet you've had her. But I never lie, I just said, no, her boyfriend was there, you know. I tell you what, um... Uh, really popular at the moment for guys is um, eyelash perming. Perming? Yeah. It's becoming really popular. Yeah. I did used to have them coloured. I used yes. to have, me, not so much my eyebrows, but the eyelashes definitely yeah. I used to have dyed black. But the girl kept Would coming round and she would drip it on my bloody sofa. Maybe the odd time in the summer I wanted a full tan. I had really cut off denim shorts, I remember. And I didn't think nothing of it. But looking back, I must have looked like something from the village people. Because I've got my boots on, 
and these bloody nail pouch, hard hat and these really small shorts. Only because I wanted a proper tan. But only a gay man would say that, wouldn't they, really? So no one else is fucking bothered. Phil's partner and the man he intends to marry is Gary Cockrell, makeup artist to the stars. I'm not the pink face or This is Gary's outfit for <laughs> Halloween. Yeah. Oh, we call it Hello Queen. <laughs> Gary worked down a mine in Yorkshire until he moved to London and fell for Phil. It sounds really corny, this and really like a gay sort of fairy tale, but we just met and we just looked at each other. He gave me his number. I said, I'm with my girlfriend, and he looked at me and said, yeah, you're with your girlfriend, but I can see it in your face you're actually gay, aren't you? And I looked at him and I didn't admit it. And then three weeks later, I left my girlfriend and I moved in with Phil and we've been together ever since. Gary works with some of the most glamorous women in showbiz. Today he's spending two hours with model Emma B doing her hair and makeup for a tabloid photo shoot. Shall I say a really good thing about Emma is, which I always say to her, which people wouldn't really look at, but obviously because I'm a makeup artist, it's one thing that I notice. And on her eyes, she's got great eyes, but she's got fantastic sockets. <laughs> in England, I've more or less done everybody. Who, you know, from Honor Blackman, 79 year old, to Charlotte Church, Liza Minnelli, and Shirley Bassey, Shirley Bassey yeah. all that sort of thing. Wicked. Tomorrow I'm with Peter and Jordan, and I'm doing their engagement pictures for OK magazine. And then after that, I've got to do Barbara Windsor for Jonathan Ross. Then I get to Jonathan Ross, and then I do Sarah Michelle Gellar. Gary's a moaner, he's a whinger, but we love him. We love to hate him, but he's adorable. Gary's a bit of an old woman, I would say, and he'd probably admit that as well. I'd say he's a control freak, to be honest, but he's lovely. I'm not really a queenie, queenie sort of gay person. Yeah, definitely, I'm more of a straight person's gay person than a gay person's gay person, I think. <laughs> I mean, there's always like that Will and Grace scenario. Every attractive girl loves a gay guy. Every girl should have a gay friend in their life who will be honest to them. You know, often I would like, you know, style my girlfriends, you know what I mean? I would, literally, I would say, wear that, wear that, wear that. I'd dress them, I'd pull their collars out. And, you know, I would, you know, gay guys do do that for their girlfriends. Like Michelle Collins will be, putting on her lipstick and she'd be like, oh, is there any smudge or... And I'd be like, no, 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 and I'll do a little wipe for her there. And you do do that for your girlfriends. Like, straight guys just don't do that. Okay. Ben Dell is a marketing wizard, the only one of our gang with a sensible job. He's the only gay man in a very straight marketing company. Sensible he may be, but after being unable to shift niggling stomach pains, he's trying some alternative therapy, colonic irrigation. I had a bit of a problem with my car for a couple of days, and I've been to the hospital, and they said, oh, you have to eat greens. And I was thinking, well, I'm in pain. You know, I can't be eating greens for, for weeks to get rid of that. And so the colonic sorted me out in a big time. So what did you have for lunch today? Fresh oysters, which were really nice. Carrot and pea soup. Mm -hmm. And then I had salmon with broccoli. Excellent. We'll give you a call on a good slap afterwards. Yeah. It's done a good job. As you work further round, it's yeah. getting more out. Yeah. Ben's quite sensible, you know, but he works in an office, so he has to be really. He's uh, he can't be going in, you know, with piss holes in the snow eyes, can he? Like the rest of us. Once he's had a few drinks, he's one of those guys that you just totally see a different side to. Um, recently at my birthday party. Um, plugged in my iPod and uh, I had a few five star tracks on there and uh, suddenly this person leapt into action and I saw him, he knew every single Stedman Pearson step from the five star videos which I found hysterical. Stan Sloan twinkled as a child star after landing a part in TV's children's ward at the age of 10. He triumphed in a heat of stars in their eyes impersonating Mark Owen and was then catapulted into the music business after winning third place in the grand final. After success in boy bands Catch 22 and Northern Line, the showbiz work dried up. 
Now 28 and working in retail, he's determined to break back into the biz with a role in a West End musical. But an audition today hasn't gone well. Well, I went to Shoreditch, I got a call from my agent as I was coming into town, and they basically said to me, we've got this cast in, uh, mod rocker, I mean, hello, um, blonde hair, campus of cuckoo. Had to go along, quick script read, out on a, literally we were out on top of this roof, so I had to be like really butch and really hard and like right in there. And I just found it really difficult. He's the baby of the group. I mean, I've seen him have a couple of tantrums with Ben recently. At one point he kicked the wall and split his toe open, which was quite funny. I'd say he was more camp than me, you know, because I'm a builder after all. Uh, but again, if I wanted to go out on the lash, I could say to Stan, should we go and do that? And he would be straight up for it, like I would be. I think they look at him a little bit because he's the youngest, and I always have to keep an eye out for him because where's Stan gone now? Where's he gone? He's, he's the sort of person who'll do quite irrational things. Um, he uh, has suffers from epilepsy, so therefore we always look out for him, like don't drink too much, don't do this. So yes, of course, we look out for that. We're aware of the, the situation and if he does go off the rails, we're always quick to sit with him and make sure he doesn't, you know, get ill or whatever. Stan's determined to get work on the West End stage. Weekly dance classes are a chance to polish his footwork and perhaps be spotted by talent scouts. That was just a warm up. He knows his heart's set on a precarious profession, but he has solid support from Ben, his partner for four years. Stan's lovely. No, Stan is. Um, he's always a bit of a joke. Stan will get on with anyone. I think you can put, put him in a room with a group of people, and people will gravitate towards him because he's, he's got a sort of a charisma about him. The group knows how to party. But there's the mother of all events looming on their social calendar, Phil and Gary's wedding. If Phil and I were to get married, I think that we would probably do it in America and we'd invite a lot of our, our friends. Obviously a lot of our friends are celebrities, so um, there probably would be quite a lot of interest in it. We'd go to uh, Las Vegas, get married there. Because Kelly Brook, we know, that lives in LA and different people, Rachel Hunter. So, you know, we get people like that. And then Sean's saying we'll do a really massive OK wedding and be the first big gay wedding on the front. Apart from Elton John, but that was a bit tacky, weren't it, really? This is a bit too tacky. Hello. Look at that. Oh. We've all had issues over the years. Like, you know, Gary had a girlfriend many years ago. Phil worked on a building site. Stan was in a boy band. Um, and Ben is part of a marketing, very straight marketing team. Bye bye. I think that's what makes us quite individual is that we're all, we've all had our issues with being gay in the past and I think that's quite comforting even for myself to finally find a small group of people um, that I'm very comfortable with. <laughs>